Okay, now that we're in intermediate trapping, I want to go into the sectors first. All right, so if Larry, just put your hands up. All right, if Larry's up, now before I've already taught you with entrapping this reference point, all right, not everything is going to be this clear. We're not always going to meet arms and trap. What we're going to do now is we're going to catch it sometimes before he punches, just like I showed you before, the five pox outs during the punch. From the connection again, as he retracts, or after the fact, one, and then I go. All right, so now you're going to have to start to get it, what we call it, like on the fly or on the move. So not always will I have this energy or this position to get to his face. If Larry blocks maybe a little bit higher, it doesn't make any sense for me to get this arm way down and then get the punch. If he's opening up, look, remember we talked about Ung Moon, the gates? Here's an open gate. Why would I want to come here and hit? So now I might just do a split entry. So I might just go right in between. All right, so we're going to name these. This is called Noi. Noi is outside. Noi, da, uh, noi pox au da comes from outside. But if the gate were open or a little high, I go in between it. Now, the way I look at it, everything out here is outside. Everything in here is going to be inside. So this is Loi. So right now, pox au Loi da or Paxal Loi Da, it's going to be confusing, but outside the Wu Sao. I'm still considered Loi because I'm inside, even though it's here, but I'm going outside that rear barrier. Wu Sao means protecting hands. So a lot of guys, when they fight, this hand is here to block. So if I go here, see how he parried it? So I go here with it. That's Paxal Loi Da. All right, so we have Paxal Noi Da, Paxal Loi Da inside the Wu Sao, Paxal Loi Da outside the Wu Sao. Now we're going to go to the, uh, well, actually that's three sectors. They count this as both the same sector, but I'm going to count it as two different. So we have one, two, three, and the next one is June. June, it's another June. You've got to remember this is a complete language. Uh, it's, it's uh, the way I've heard it is homophones. Um, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen like uh, accent marks over words. Uh, over, over letters in words it's to where like if you take the letter O it could have a straight line or the slant up, slant down or a little hook and it's all the, uh, the pronunciation of the word. So it's Jun means middle now. So now there's Jun like in Jun Fan, there's Jun like in the spin and I got Jun to make it more confusing, middle. Okay, so now when we go this is Jun Da. Alright, so it's Pak Sao Jun Da. So that means just I'm hitting it in the middle. Okay, it's not going for the face anymore. I'm not head hunting anymore. I'm not here. I'm going to the body. Okay, so we got four now. Now we're going to go into the last one. The last one is ha. Ha means low. Go means high. So this is ha da. So it's paxal ha da. The uh, paxal ha da. The ha da could go to the groin, could go to the thigh, uh, whatever a low target is beneath the waistband. So if I'm here, I, I go here. All right, if he punches at me, I might drop and hit the groin, okay? So that's just, it's your preference, what you want to do or what you feel is open. So again, we go outside, inside, inside but outside the rear protecting hand, middle, low. You got it? All right, so now you need to, you need to get these down because when we're sparring later, which you're going to see, we're going to be here, and you'll see a lot of times I try to go like that, but maybe this arm is just up. It's going to fail. It's no good. I, did, I didn't do what I needed to do. I didn't uh, search out my, my open gate. So right now, if I go, whoa, oh, there, that's open. So I went inside. Okay, so just train it. Outside, inside, in between the arms, inside, but outside the rear arm, middle and low. Okay, now we're going to go into a drill. Uh, sometimes they'll say it's a uh, xiang tan sao, or xiang means two, whenever you hear me say xiang. Uh, it comes from praying mantis. A lot of people think that it comes from Wing Chun Gung Fu, and it's not. This comes from mantis. Mantis style is more like that. If you ever see some of the uh, practitioners of it, they'll fight like this. It looks a little strange, but it has a lot of validity to it when you understand it. Uh, let me explain some of the position. This is called fuk sao. Fuk sao it, it, it's uh, just like a hook right here. If he's in, Larry will feel he'll, he'll be snagged a little bit. It's kind of controlling. It's, it's pretty good position. Uh, you'll see it sometimes if he crosses. See, I go like that. See the hook comes out of it? All right, you'll see this more when I do the dummy form because it goes into this position. 
Um, right now, I don't know if you're a boxing fan, but if you ever read uh, Jack Dempsey's book, they, call, they talk about the Dempsey uh, sh uh, shift. The Dempsey shift was this. It's not book sal, but it's just like it. You look at the book, you'll see. When he goes, he goes like that, and then he would just come in with a hit. And I always use that as a reference to people when they try to say, hey, how am I going to use this? Such a weird position. Right now, all we're doing is we're isolating, okay? So Fook Sal just kind of covers the hand, okay? And you do this kind of little pinch thing right here. I was actually taught this not by Sifu Dan and Asanto, this pinch finger structure, but by uh, Sifu Randy Williams. And it, it, I've asked uh, Sifu Dan about it, and he liked it, and he said it was totally valid, so I do use it. But they pinch these two fingers, and then they squeeze these other fingers. And Larry can tell you, if, if, when he feels it, you feel like, like I got him. Okay, it's kind of like stuck right in there a little bit. Okay, so that's the fuk sal. Tan sal is a palm up block. Okay, and now all it is, a lot of people say it should be here. Others say it should be here. Some people say it should be bent. It's wherever it works. If I'm fighting somebody six foot two, obviously my tan can't be here. It might have to be up here. If I'm fighting somebody about my height, yeah, I could go here. Maybe if it's shorter, it's got to be lower. It just, there is no wrong or right, I've found out. I've, heard, I've had a lot of instructors in Wing Chun, and each of them advocate doing it a different way. And they all have valid reasons for doing it that way. You research it, you do it the way that you prefer, that works for you. You'll, you'll feel it. Once a guy starts firing on you and you got to start blocking, you're going to start to feel where it's supposed to be. Your body's not gonna, let you, I mean, your, your brain's not gonna let you say, I'll oh, put it here. Your body's gonna tell you, no, it's gotta go here. You gotta keep, you know, some defense up. Okay, and then, oh, I'm sorry, the last position I want you to have is bong sao. Bong sao means wing, actually wing hand, but they say wing arm. This is bong sao. Now the bong sao, again, people say it should be elbow up, elbow even, hand relaxed. Some people say hand stiff. If they have a valid reason, if you make it work that way, God bless you, you do it, okay? But right now, I'm gonna have you have relaxed hand, and I want you to kind of screw it out. Don't go up. There's a muscle here called the teres minor, and a lot of people who do like exercising flies and stuff, they'll get bad shoulder problems, but the reason is they're straining the teres minor. So if I'm here with Larry, and I'm going up, I'm lifting all this weight, especially if he's pressing a little bit, it's gonna burn you out fast, all right? Uh, when I was doing a lot of chi sao with my instructor, uh, Randy Williams, for years, he just let me go, and I would be burning. It would hurt so bad, and he would kind of sit back and giggle, and he never told me. I, it's, it's not that he was being mean. He was just having fun with me, but he didn't tell me. Ron screwed in. After a while, it hurt so bad, I started thinking, I'm cheating, and I just started to push it. He goes, ah, you got it now, and I go, all that time you could have told me, I would have got it a lot sooner, but he just let me work it, and I don't regret doing that. It just taught me a big lesson. You know, for one, ask questions. It's hurting. Why is this hurting? What should I do? It's all, it, it's all in the way that you ask. Um, I, from what I understand with Sifu Dan and Asanto, when Bruce Lee was teaching him, he would be doing it. He's like, what am I doing wrong? And Bruce Lee would say, I found the cause of my own ignorance. You go find yours. And he would make you search it out. And sometimes if you couldn't find it, maybe it was come back and ask the right question. So don't just always assume that as a teacher they're going to give it to you. You know, uh, again, I don't want to keep on with the analogies, but if you teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime. If you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Sometimes you got to sit there and you got to work it out. You can't be spoon-fed everything. You need to sit there and just drill it. And if you do it wrong and then you're with me or whoever your instructor is, they might give you, corre you know, corrections. Some of the answers you're going to find on your own. Okay, so now going back into this, he's going to go into Tan Sao with both hands, Xiang Tan Sao. I am going to go with the double Fuk Sao or Xiang Fuk Sao. All right, the first drill, I am gonna jut. Jut means to jerk, all right? So when I go jut sao, I am gonna punch. Don't block it. This is what I want. So if we're fighting here, I, I just wanna get the hit. See, if, if Larry's up, I might wanna get the hit this way. So he's gonna build a tactile reflex that will not allow me to break contact, hopefully, okay? So when I go and I jerk that arm down and I go to punch, Larry should go into Bong Sao first, please. Bong Sao, okay? So one more time, it's gonna go one, Bong Sao, okay? Now I want him to not be flaccid, but be flaccid. Don't let that thing bend in, uh, uh, that's too flaccid. All right, if it's too flaccid like that, do that. One, if it's too flaccid, you're just gonna slide in and hit, okay? If it's too hard, I might redirect, okay? If I feel that energy right away. 
Uh, if he breaks contact, I score it again. If he overexerts, and uh, real, real fast, hard up, I might just go right underneath it because he just gave me too much. Okay. What I want him to do, it's going to be kind of like the analogy that I, I always use for that is like an old screen door. If the screen is, uh, the spring is really stretched, you can sit there and you can push on the door and it doesn't really give you any resistance. If you let go, it kind of just sticks to your hand, but it really doesn't give you resistance back in either. It's just kind of there. I want you to be there and just misguide me. Don't be too much, don't be too soft. You, you have to kind of meet and match my energy. Okay, you got to remember a lot of these systems. Uh, I'm going to re uh, resort back to Wing Chun for a second. Wing Chun is a, uh, was developed by a woman. Her name was Yin Wing Chun, and she wasn't like the, uh, she wasn't probably the most powerful person in her village, but she adapted a system to where she could match the energy of the person coming at her. So uh, she she was definitely more tactile, which most women are. So that's what we're going to try to get out of us is more of a tactile reflex. So if I jerk, I'm just going to go one hand for a second. Put it down. If I jerk this down, I want him to stay with me and just roll into it. Okay? This is, to me, I look at this as a good beginning to chi sao, which means sticky hands. Uh, if you think about, here comes another analogy. Think about a ball. Okay? I've got a ball and say it's got glue on it. And if I roll that ball on the ground, it's going to stick and uh, stick to the ground, just roll, and it's not going to slide. If I had another ball, it might skip a little bit, okay? So I want you to think of glue. If I jerk this down and I go, Larry is going to roll with it, like it, there was glue on both of our arms, and it just kind of rolls. It, it doesn't, uh, it, going into it, it doesn't spin up. It does, it's not going to, real hard and fast. It's, you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that motion through the mic, but go again. All right, do it again. You're not going to hear a lot of that sliding, that skidding. I want it to go like that, to actually kind of quiet. So I'm going to start to jerk it, and then he'll roll up. Do you see this motion? This is what I want out of you. So my foot sow comes down a little bit, and then I turn it into a punch. He just rolls up. Now again, when you do the bong sow, it's like you're screwing something into the wall, or you're turning the keys to a car. Okay. So when he goes, he screws it right into my chest. Okay, so now we're going to do it with two hands. So uh, you could stay in Yichi Kim Yongma and do this. I like being in leads, okay? And you should work both leads. Try to get comfortable in any lead that you can get into or be comfortable wherever you are. So sometimes maybe we square. Sometimes pick the right, sometimes pick the left. I'm going to go right now our right lead so we're open to you, up, uh, open to you so you could watch this. So we go one. I jerk it down. I punch. He bong sao. Okay? I jerk it down. Bong Sao. One more time. There. So now as my student starts to get better at this, I start to get a little snappier. So let, let me in once. I want to start to threaten him a little bit. So don't go for his face. You're not going to have fun. Your partner's not going to want to train long if you keep doing that, keep hitting him in the face. Just go one and hit the chest. So now you're not going to let me get away with that. There it is. See it? He's got cohesion now. See, and then I mix it up. Don't always go right, left, right, left. Sometimes double it up, switch it. Okay? All right, that's bong sao. So now, now that Larry's starting to feel comfortable with it, we're going to go into what we call tan sao. Now, tan sao, palm up block. I don't want you to do this. Okay? If Larry did this, one, and if he went out, look at that's open. If I did break contact, go, on, go out. It just opens that up. He doesn't want that. Don't feel too good to keep doing that. So all I want him to do is, I don't want him to move his arm out. I want him to depend on his hip to get him out of trouble. So right now, if I go one, he turns the hip and just comes back. One, turns the hip, comes back. See it? He just turns it, turns it, turns it. I'm not throwing a punch back at him at the start. I want him to feel not threatened. If I keep going like that, he's, he's not going to get it. So I just kind of jerk it and I push forward and I let him carry me outside, misguiding my hand. Okay? But he does it following what we call his self-center line. Okay? Now, bong sao is what they call a yang block. It, it doesn't follow the self-center line. Even though the hand's there, the bong can turn, to meaning my center line might go to here. But the tan is a centerline block. I don't want to do this because it opens me up. I want to be here, and I want to turn here or here, okay? 
All right, so we go tan sao. Tan sao. See how he's starting to? Now I'm going to start to punch a little bit. So now I get a little snappier. Okay, that's it. All right, so now he's comfortable with tan. He's comfortable with bong. Now Larry's going to play with me a little bit. Sometimes he'll just go tan sao, just go tan sao, and back. But sometimes he's going to get wise, and he's going to come back, and he's going to palm me. Now, where he put it is where I want you to put it. Larry's used to this. One, he puts it right there. All right, now, here comes a big factor. You're teaching class. You get a woman in your class. <laughs> Be respectful. You have to. Okay, I've, I've, I've run in this situation a lot, and you're going to run into it. It's like if I'm here... And it, the average woman out there not, is not going to appreciate me going like that to her chest. Just be respectful. Put it out there and let, let her do the work, okay? You don't have to touch. Just, you have to. If you're a school owner, you're going to agree with me 100%, okay? Just, just, you have to be courteous and you have to be respectful. So what I want you to do is you're going to go, one, if it's a guy, I want him to come back and touch, okay? So one, back, and then he's going to touch. But now I don't want to let him get away with that. So I pull it down. And then I punch, and he's going to go into bung, drills over. So it goes one. He turns. He comes back at me. See, this is called jut sao, bung sao, back. Okay? So I go jut sao, tan sao, jut sao, bung sao. Now, the jut, the first one is from fuk sao. I just jut, and I punch. Look at my hand. So it's almost like I, I, I'm kind of going high. Okay? So when I'm here, I go one. Two, do you see that? One, two. It's the same thing. If we go one, and if he goes tan sao, I come back. Now, the way that I'm always, I, I've always been taught was, pull it into your waist. It won't go there. If he's going to go, uh, go up towards my face, no. yes, do one more time, please. If he goes to my face, I want to pull it down. What it does is it kind of stalls that energy. Go slow. One, if he's coming to my face, it stalls that energy out and then I just come back with a punch, okay? So we go one, punch, come back, punch. So as he comes back, I misguide it and I bring it down. I want to kind of take the energy out of it. A lot of people say he's going to get hit in the stomach or you're going to get hit in the stomach. You know, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it's a contact sport. It's not even a sport. It's just contact. It's a physical uh, uh, combative drill. You just got to develop that energy and get that block, all right? So if we're here... One, tan, jut, bung. So watch. I go jut. My chung choi, which is my punch, okay, he comes back, jut sao, bung sao. You see that? And then he rolls back. Other side, jut. Chung choi, he tans, tan sao, jut sao, bung sao. So now we're going to start to make it a little alive, okay? One more. Okay, so now you have the three sections, right? First one, bong sao. Second one, tan sao. Third one, jut sao. He goes to tan. I jut again, punch. He uses bong sao to stop it, okay? All right, now the last one that I want you to know is if we do a double, he is going to go wrong way. Not double bung that opens the bottom line, or it could possibly open the upper line. If you know you're in trouble, you keep raising your hands up. He's not going to go double tan, because look at this is just really obviously wrong, okay? What I want to do is one of each. Now, when you're starting a student on this, make them pick a side. No matter what I do, this is going to be bung sao. No matter what I do, this is tan sao. Uh, I didn't go both, just one. There you go. You're going to get that. Sometimes you're going to go, and he's going to be so anxious, both will go. Try not to. Like, go with both. No, no, no. Uh, bong tan. See, it, it'll open it if I'm not pushing. Why should I follow it? If I went with both, then he should go. So this is what I want. One. Now, you're going to say, who punches with double? It, it's not it doesn't necessarily mean that. What it means, maybe I'm trying to grab him. All right? What if I go like that? So he's going to stick to it. See it? All right? So you're going to go one, bong. 
one ton. Now, if Larry just stuck to that, he's good. Because if, if we do both, he's going to be used to it. The, or do both the other way. One, this is going to be a little more advanced. It sounds simple. It'll just switch it to the other side. But once you program your mind, oh, this one's got to go here, this one's got to go here, and then you start to switch, you're going to start to mess up. You'll have both hands go that, this way or both hands go this way. So you got to go one, there. Or I might go single. And he goes, see, that's a little more advanced. Now he's switching up the ton to the bong. But right now, just stay the ton. One, there. One, there. There. See it? He's just sticking to one side. Now it's not as confusing. Now, once the student progresses a little further, mix it up both sides. So he could bong. He can ton. He can ton. He could bong. He can ton. He can bong. I double, who knows where he's going? One, who knows where he's going? So this, you just play with it. See it? Good. And you see the way he challenged me? He went back to the time, came right back at me. I had to feel it, okay? So you just play with this. Play with it, and you're going to get a little better at it, okay? So one, there. That's it. Okay, so now the last part that I want you to do, if we do do a double and he goes, he still can threaten me with that. So he rolls back down and then we go back into it. Or the other side, he goes here, he's got the choice. He still can come after me. Okay, so if I do a single, he can keep on or he can challenge me, right? He can go one here or challenge me. Or if we do a double, he could challenge me there. Or he could possibly just go, so, sorry, do the same one again. He can go just back. That's his prerogative. All right, you should build this tactile reflex and develop that skill. Okay, so last time, I'm going to go over everything for you one last time. Single hand for a second. One, he can bong sao. Two, tan sao with the twist of the hip. Three, he challenges me. One, he comes back in. Four, we can do both hands. Stick to one side at the start. So if both go, see, he could threaten me right there. One. See, he goes back in. I go with, uh, with uh, Chung Choi. He will go into the last Bong Sao. Roll back. Okay. So this is Xiang Tan Sao, Xiang Fuk Sao, Xiang Jet Sao, or I can go single, which is Dan. Dan is like Dan Chi, single sticky hand. So uh, it's your choice. But this whole drill, it's just going to develop him tactily. If I told him to put, uh, uh, feel my arm, most people use their hand or their fingers. I want you to start to use other parts of your body to get the tactile reflex. You should be able to feel where I'm going. If I go like that and I go to hit him, he should know where I'm at. Okay, so this drill is awesome for it. It's going to bring out that tactile reflex in you just to where you're going to know where the person's at. I'm not going to get away with touching him as much just because he just played with this drill. So challenge him, go after him a little bit. If you're getting too much success in hitting him, back off. Let him develop his tactile reflex and, and you'll see that you'll get a lot out of this drill. It's, it's, to me, more than valid for, for today's fighting systems that are out there. If you, gra if you get this tactile reflex, people aren't going to be getting as much on you, especially if you get into this grappling situation. If I ever want to jerk down, he's going to know exactly where I am, and he's going to counter it. Okay, And this drill, I think, really brings it out well. Okay, now I'm going to go into a section it's called Don Chi Sao. Don Chi Sao uh, means single sticky hand. This is a hard section for a lot of people. And a lot of people, I think they're misinformed. They think the extent of it is this one little drill that I'm about to show you. But as you'll see, as we progress through this whole thing, you're going to see there's a lot more entailed in Don Chi Sao. So let's start at the beginning. A lot of people may know this right now. The beginning is very basic. Joe is going to go into Tan Sao. Okay, the Tan Sao again, palm's going to be flat for now. I am in Fuk Sao. It's going to look like that double praying mantis drill that we did, but it's not. It's going to be single, uh, single hand, and he's going to initiate. It's not going to be me initiating, okay? Joe will come in. He's going to turn it over. This is called Jik Jern, or Dim Jern, as you heard me say through this tape. Sometimes I'll refer to it. Same, same position, same hand, basically. It just comes in. It's going to go like as if he wants to wipe down my face, okay? So right here, he's in Tan Sao. I have my Fuk Sao going. When he turns it over, I am going to stop it the same way that I did in the Praying Mantis drill that we had done. All right, I'm going to punch, Bong Sao. He will return 
end of drill. That's one cycle. So again, he'll turn it over. I pull it to stop it, like I'm bringing it into my belly. Punch and roll back, OK? Now, important, this hand I want here. This hand can be here. Don't put your hand here or here or wherever else you want to put it. I see guys do this. Go, they're like this. It's just you're building bad habits. Have that hand ready or have it ready. Okay, so I just want it, I, I want attention put to it. Okay, just don't be flaccid with it, leaving it hang around. All right, so you can go here. I like it here. Joe likes it here. It's fine. Just as long as he's doing something with it. Just don't leave it hanging. Okay, so when we go, it's going to go. One, I pull it, punch, roll back. Again, one, two, back. One, two, back. So now we're just going to roll a little more fluid without me talking. Now, if you look at my stance, I'm in Yichi Kim Youngma. We can also go to left lead. We can go left lead. We can go in the right lead. It doesn't matter. In fact, I, I applaud it if you do do all the different leads you have, uh, that you have at your disposal, OK? You should just be comfortable no matter where you're at. OK, so now, once you get rolling with Don Chi Sao and you're starting to feel comfortable with it, what I want you to do is I want you to start to learn the switches. So how can I go from the outside to the inside? How can he go from the inside to the outside? We both have a choice in this matter. So we're going to start with Joe. He's going to move to the outside. So one, and then over. Good. Go into Don Chisau and then move into it. One, two. So when he rolls back, look what he does. He points his fingers at the floor. And then he's going to punch. The reason why I have him do this, do it one more time, Don Chi. One, two. If he were to just swing out, look at what it does. It opens that line. All right, he needs to keep that line protected. One more time. One, two, when he rolls out, now if I, when he starts to come up, if I feel it's empty, look at he's going to cover that. I've got to re, uh, resort to my block or be hit. Okay, this brings up another interesting point. Like I see this a lot. Just roll, uh, let me do this. If I, if I go into Don Chi and we're going like I see guys going like this. Now watch, let's slow down. What am I doing? My elbow's out. It, it, it's a really meticulous drill. You've got to stay tight with it. Do you see this? My elbow has to stay in. Okay. Uh, in, in Wing Chun Gung Fu, they talk about the, immov uh, the immovable moving elbow line. And everybody goes, what? The Im immovable moving elbow line. And what I want you to think about, think if I had two little railroad tracks that drove right here, straight into me, and then they hook out and come around. Now picture your elbows in that little car on the track. So when I go, my hand should come back all on that track. Do you see it? I don't want to go like this, like that, all right? Because what I'm, what I'm doing is, if I'm, uh, if I'm here and my arm's out, punch forward. See, he's got that line. He can just shoot right in anytime he wishes. Now watch this. If I'm in the center line, punch forward. See, it, it snags in that line. So you want to try to really train that elbow to be in. Now watch, if I turn my hand, he gets it again. You see? So if my hand is straight, it opens that line. Do it one last time. All right, so if I turn it back straight when he comes in, it does snag. He can't come directly in at my chest, OK? So right from here, what I want you to do is, uh, uh, let me switch it back. OK, so if he's in Tan Sao, elbow in. Can't stress the importance of it, all right? He is going to turn over like he's going to wipe down my face. I bring it down, all right? I was a little late on that just because I'm talking when I should have been working. But when he goes, one, and then back. I'll remove this hand for Don Chi so you can see it a little better. One. Two, you see it? Turns it up. He turns it down at me. I punch. We return to the beginning position. So that's the importance of having it not here, but here. Even this little bit, it truly opens this line compared to here. He's snagging me already. I mean, obviously, I could change my angle. But if I change my angle, you know he's going to change his angle also. OK? So right here, first switch one last time. He's going to go into Don Chi. No, go into Don Chi. One. Two, he rolls back, points it down, and then I go up. I have no choice. I'm going to do it to Joe. One, two, when I come down, I roll it and I point my hand down, and then I come over. See, if I'm here, one, two, and if I roll it, he's going to probably want to punch me. But if I go like that, see how I steal it? I get to hit him. So if he feels that, one, two, and I roll, he's got to go into Bong Sao to stop me from 
proceeding in and getting the hit. Okay, that's our first switch. Second switch now is going to be called a, a, a jut switch. So jut means jerk. So one more time, one, two, as he comes down, I help him down. And then he comes right over. It's almost the same thing. Once I push that down, he does that little hand swivel and punch. No elbow out. Do the elbow out once. Roll one time. One, two. If he goes elbow out, I just go right in and I get that hit. Not good for him, okay? What he's got to do is one, two. When I jerk it, see it? His arm. I'm going to go slow motion. One, two. I jerk that down. Look at his elbow. It didn't move. He's going back in for me, okay? So now that's the switches. So now we're just going to roll a little bit, and then I'll switch uh, back and forth in there. All right, let's slow down. I ton switch. I jut switch. One more time. I ton. I jut. Okay, so I'm doing all the switching now. Although uh, Joe can take over and he can do the switching also, but right now I'm just going to freeze it on me so you know what to look for. If we go, I ton switch. Now I'm going to jut switch. I help him down and now he comes back with the punch. You should know this left and right. You should be just as comfortable. So you should be able to go to your ton switch or to your jut switch. Okay, that's Don Chi Sao, inside to outside hand. In Don Chi, we had one, bong, and back. Now remember the praying mantis drill. Sometimes he would just ton and come back, all right? Other times he would challenge me a little bit and put the uh, jik jern in, right? Do it one last time. One, jik jern, bong sao. All right, now in dan chi, he's gonna put this back, either here or here, it doesn't matter to me. He's gonna go one, so now he'll go to the tan, see the twist of the hip? Comes back, bong sao, that's a rep, okay? So when we're here, he can go one, right into just Don Chi. So we'll roll a little bit. Okay, so now we're rolling in Don Chi Sao. So now he can come one, he can go to the Tan, come back to the uh, uh, Jik Jern, I Jut Sao, and then Bong Sao. So now he's not gonna do it every time, he's just gonna roll. And when Joe feels like it, he's just gonna go to it. So it challenges me a little bit. I've gotta keep that reflex up. When he goes into it, I have to feel it. So just do it on your own, whatever you want. Okay, let's slow down. All right, again, one, instead of going to the tan sao, I mean into the bong sao, he's just going to go to tan sao, come back with the jik jern. I go jut sao, he goes bong sao. You've already done this in the praying mantis drill. If I went one, he has that option, right? Or straight to the bong. That's it, okay? So if this is here, he has that option still. It, the only difference is he's initiating now. I'm not doing the jerk anymore. He just comes in. With the jik jern, he could go to bong, or he comes in jik jern, goes to the tan, back to the jik jern, to the bong sao. So you should already have this uh, already burned into you. Just kind of throw it into your dan chi. It kind of mixes things up and makes it a little more playful. We're moving forward now. Let's go a little further with dan chi. All right, Joe's going to be in. He's going to start. One, just rolling. You remember, he's got all these options now. He can switch. I can switch. Right? I can go into the tan, back to the uh, jik jern, and then back into the roll. Let me do that again. Tan, he jik, there you go, and I do the bong, right? So we're, we're starting to progress. We're starting to put a little bit of variables in here. So now, the next one that I want to do is I want to put this hand through, and I'm going to go outside to outside. Obviously, we can do it on both sides. I'm just going to stay on this side for right now. So once we get to this position, which I'll show you how to get into while we're rolling, but at the start, we're going to go one, two, three. Now look at it. It's the same thing. If I go jik jern, he jut saos, and then he's going to punch the chung choi, I do the bong sao. Same thing. I'm tan sao, I turn it over with the jik jern. He jut saos, then he punches, 
the chung choy, I go bong sao, okay? Then we roll back. So we're just going to roll with this a little bit, let you take a look at it. Okay, so now let's start to put it in to our roll. All right, again, the same thing. It's right here. He goes into fuk sao. That's going to be the main difference. Right here, we're almost tan to tan. Here, he's going to turn into the fuk. All right, that's the main difference is fuk sao versus the tan sao. Obviously, he can't fuk sao here because that's going to open a line. All right, so he goes tan because if I punch forward again, if he has his elbow in, it deflects it. If the elbow's loose, I'll get through. Okay, so I turn it over. Don't, don't, don't react yet. I turn it over. It's like I want to come in. Maybe I want to come in and slap, whatever. You, uh, I could maybe just want to punch. He's going to roll that hand over and pulls it down, almost like he's pulling it into his belly again. He punches. I put up the bones out to stop it. End of a cycle. We're on turn next one. One, two, back. One, two, back. All right, from the inside, one, two, back. Same thing, the only difference, the fuk sao versus the tan sao. So while we roll, now watch this. I come up, do you see it? Just wanted to freeze it. Okay, I come up. So then we go and we continue the roll. If I want to go back, I put the hand in right here. So real slow, let's go like snail slow, I could come up, do you see it? So it's like I just bring it up. All right, jut, bong sao. Back in. One, two, back. One, two, back. Now I'm going to switch it. One, as he punches, I tan sao. Jut sao, bong sao. Do you see it? One, two, back. One, two, back. Now here I go. One, as he punches, I tan sao. Then I come back, chick jern, he goes jut sao, and then to the bong sao when he chung choys. Okay? And back. One, there, see my switch? So I'm just going to switch a little bit for you, just to watch how it looks while we're rolling. Let's go a little slower so they can pick it up. Okay, I'm going to pick up the pace again. All right, let me slow down again. I come in, he stops it, I roll back. One, as soon as he punches, tan sao. Right? And now, again, when we go one, I, tan, I don't do this. See how my body squared it? I turn. The tan is a yin block. It follows my center line. All right, so when we're rolling, one, see the tan? I turn. Then I come back, and then we can switch back again. All right? All right, and time. Now that is what we call uh, outside to outside. So now we're going to hook hands right here, inside to inside. So he's going to jut back when I punch. His fingers point almost like they're pointing at the target of what they want to go at. So that means his punch comes right here, and he's going to shoot it and hit it. So this, sometimes they'll call it toy sao, because it follows it back, or it tracks back. Toy means to back up, OK? So we go one, two, right here. That's it. So go one, two. This is simple. OK, so this is inside to inside. So now let's put it in the flow. Slow down. See how I'm here? So as he punches, now look, we're into this drill. I point back. It's almost like it's shooting. I, I point at what I want to hit. Okay, so this is like my gun sight. I say, oh, I want to go right at his face. He deflects me out of the way, and then I come back. Okay, so this is the first one, right? Inside to outside. Now I'm going outside to outside. All right, now I go inside to inside. Slow down. So I deflect it past the face, shoot back. Deflect past the face, shoot back. So back to Dan Chi. So I'm just going to roll a little bit and let you just look at it. All right, now I'm going kind of fast, so I'll slow it down.
Okay, all right, time. Now, we're gonna go to the last part that I want you to learn. Do you remember in the beginning material, you had to learn the bong sao cycle? So, all right, so from the bong sao cycle, I just go to don chi sao. So I want you to put that in. And obviously we can switch sides. Okay, so when we're here, well, as I'm going, one, I could go right here. This puts us into it. I can swap over to the other side, and we're into Don Chi on the other side. Okay, so this is going to end it. So let me recap for you. You have Don Chi. Okay, you have Don Chi where he goes in. He can go to Tan Sao, come back. You have the two switches. You have the Tan switch. Go one more time, Don Chi. One, two, and he rolls in, gets the switch. You have the jut switch, where as I finish my cycle, he jerks me down, I shoot forward, keeping my elbow in, okay? Then you have, uh, fr from here, you got outside to outside, one, right in. Obviously, either side could do it. It's a neutral position, okay? It just depends on how you feel in the roll and what's going on. But one, we put it in. Okay, we have inside to inside. Okay, and we have lop sow cycle. So now we just kind of combined it. You see it? And we can go both sides. Okay, time. Okay, that's Don Chi. That's going to bring you pretty far into the system now. You've got a lot to play with. It makes Don Chi much more interesting than both of us just sitting here going, okay, go. Uh, okay, this is big fun. Yeah, it gets a little boring. So I kind of jazz it up a little bit by one. See, I can go here. I just sit there and just play with it. Okay, all right. So it kind of makes it a little more fun, a little more challenging. This is going to start to bring you into Chi Sao. You should start to develop that tactile reflex really well now. You should feel... Your spider senses should be on, okay? It's the, the minute I feel it, I know. I can feel his whole body. I know if he moves his foot, if I'm connected here. And you'll start to feel it. You just gotta kinda give into it, relax into it, and you'll start to pick it up. So let's get ready, and we're gonna start to get set for uh, all the chi sao that I'm gonna throw into the intermediate level.